Hey guys, good morning. <laughs> it's morning time in my garden and we still have one pot to plant up with some flowers, some beneficial flowers for our container vegetable garden that we are growing. And I wanted, before we do that, before we plant that last planter up, I wanted to show you um, the progress of our green beans, which were the first thing we planted. And then a week later, we planted out um, some wildflowers and we also did our larger container where we had cucumbers, radishes, and carrots. So come on, let's go see how they're doing. Look at our tower of green beans. All of them are doing fantastic. They're growing. And they've been getting some rain in my area. As a matter of fact, it's going to rain today. Um, so they're going to get more of that good rainwater. But they are doing fantastic. So let's go check out our wildflowers and see if anything germinated. Looky there. Yep, we have germination of some plants that we planted in here. And those will just keep, look at these little baby ones that are just popping through. Remember, this was a mix. So these are going to be all different kinds of flowers that are coming up. And there's something right there sticking up through there. And um, so this is exciting. This did really well. And these will just get bigger and eventually they'll be so big you won't even be able to see the pot or the soil. Because you'll have all those beautiful uh, wildflowers. Uh, so now let's check on our larger container. Okay, guys, here it is. So these are all of our radishes right here in the front that we planted. These are our cucumbers. They're starting to get their true leaves right there. Now this one, this is good. It looks like it only has, no, there's another one. So we have two plants. So you have to do something. If you have too many plants planted in a, in a place, they're not gonna do well because they have to have enough space. Um, this one didn't quite germinate quite right. If you see, it's kind of wonky. So I'm going to pinch that off just like that. And I'm just going to toss that into my other garden and it can compost. So now we just have this one cucumber plant that can trellis up. But here we have three. This is too many. They're too close together. So this one looks to me to be the better plant. Um, this one didn't fully open up. So I'm just going to pull that out. And if you wash these, actually, you can you could eat the greens if you wanted to. But um, you don't have to. And so I think this one looks healthier. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that one out that one I might stick in another pot and see if it does anything because it has a little bit of roots on it so now we have two cucumber plants we have our radishes they look spaced pretty well and we're just gonna leave them alone and if you see those things in the back that look like little grass blades those are our carrots so we're just gonna let those go as they get a little bit bigger we may have to thin those out a little bit um, and that would be just like what we did with the cucumbers. You would look at them and you'd say, well, that's too close for those carrots to grow. And you just pinch the top off. And if you do that, that will help you have enough room um, for carrots to grow. Some of these are still too small, so I'm not going to mess with any more of those. But that's something you need to watch out when you're checking your plants. And... This is doing fantastic. It likes this spot. So yeah, we are having great success. So let's check our um, hummingbird feeder. So this is one of my raised beds before we check our hummingbird feeder. And if you could see, this cucumber doesn't look so great. So I'm just gonna kind of put a little small hole. I don't know if this one will work or not, but the one we pulled out that still had roots, I'm just gonna see, I'm gonna sit him down in there. And then we're just going to cover him back up. And we'll see what happens. If he likes it there, there's a trellis right there he can grab hold of. And he can live a good life. If he doesn't make it, well, we gave him a shot. 
There we go. So now let's check out our hummingbird feeder. Okay, so it still has pretty much most of what we put in there. I haven't seen any of the hummingbirds just yet. So I haven't checked this week to see the migration patterns, but it's here when they want it. Typically, I have to say, I don't typically see hummingbirds till closer into like June-ish. So that's still a few weeks away. So I'm still hopeful that I will have lots of hummingbirds come to my garden this year. Oh, look what I have down here. Do y'all know what these are? Those are blueberries. These are blueberries in a bucket. See, this is, like I told you, if you plant in buckets, and do you see these little things? Those are cherries. You see them? Those little tiny things, those are gonna be cherries. This is actually a cherry bush. And it looks like I might actually get cherries this year. I'm excited, and there's some more blueberries. And what else do I have in here? I also have, these are blackberries. So you can see, that's a black, that's the beginning of a blackberry. And then that's a fig. We have another blackberry, and then these are all fig trees. And what are they all in? They're in buckets, they're in containers. So you can grow fruits, vegetables, you can grow a lot of things, that's a weed. We don't want that with our blueberries. You can grow a lot of things in containers. And so just keep that in mind as you're developing your garden. See all the clouds in the back. So it's already, we've had a few little sprinkles. So, but I had to get out here early this morning because I had to pick my breakfast. Yeah, I said pick my breakfast. So in my front garden, because I have a front garden as well, and it has a lot of flowers and stuff, but I have, I have sugar snap peas growing, and, oops, I also have, oh, look, strawberries growing. So I picked me some um, sugar snap peas for breakfast. <laughs> And I got a handful of strawberries I'm going to enjoy um, in just a bit. But we have work to do first. So I'm going to set those aside. I've got my gloves. All right. These are a little bit different ones. I don't know where my, I think I left my other ones in the front garden. And we, if you remember, we have two more packets of seeds that we purchased. Zinnias and our marigolds. Now marigolds are kind of stinky they don't smell very great but they look great and they're helpful for your plants because uh, pests bugs and things they think they stink so they they don't particularly want to hang around with um, that smell around so they stay away from your plants um, that have marigolds around them and so this is always a good one to grow in your garden Bees don't think it stinks. They love it. They love marigolds and we need bees because those help pollinate our plants and so that we get fruit. So the, this is a great one to grow. Every gardener should grow some of those and they're really easy to grow. And then there's zinnias. Zinnias are a beautiful flower. If you can see, they're very unique. They have all different kinds of colors and things. This is a multi-pack, so you don't know what color exactly you'll get. You'll get different colors. And these you can cut, and they just keep blooming. And you can put them in a little vase or a mason jar and make your kitchen look pretty or next to your bedside table if you have one. Um, so I love to plant zinnias. I plant zinnias every year. I love zinnias. They're very pretty. And again, the pollinators, butterflies, bees, hummingbirds, they all love zinnias. So you can't go wrong with these. So we all we have to do is we've got, this was our last container we have, or whatever your last container is that you have. Um, because this one has like three sections. So, um, I think I'm going to do two with zinnias and one with marigold. And, um, because 
Um, I already have a lot of marigold in my garden, so I think I'll be good to do that. Okay, so I have some soil in my little container here. And I'm gonna get it into here. And I don't have my spade. I moved it up front. I was gardening and I was using it. So I'm gonna use my hands, which are our best tools. And I'm just gonna start putting my seed, I mean my uh, soil, not my seed, into our container here. And if you have this in a big bag, you might need to get help pouring it into your container. But if you have like an old cup or something, or a plastic cup or something, you could use that and scoop it out. I do that sometimes. I think one of my chickens is fixing to lay an egg. I hear her. That noise is a chicken laying an egg. <laughs> I hope y'all can hear it. Okay, so we've got it pretty good and full. Have some, I've been collecting some rainwater. I leave my, this out so when it rains, it gets some of that good rainwater. Cause if you remember, I told you that rainwater has, um, nitrogen in it which is something that helps feed our plants and makes them green up so this is this is nature's food here okay so i'm going to go ahead and kind of pre-moisten my soil a little i don't want to do too much but just a little so that this will be a good environment for our seeds and i'm not going to water it too much afterwards because it is going to rain and I don't want to drown my seeds. Can you see what that is? Can y'all see that? Let's see. Now you, at first glance, might think that this is a ladybug. Kind of. It is not. A ladybug is redder. This is more of an orange. And she has, def she has definite black spot pattern on it. This is actually a squash bug. So if you have any kind of pumpkin squash, this is a pest, a bad pest, one you don't want. So what we do when we have those, she was in my container, she was in my soil. When I have things like this that I don't want, and this is not something necessarily the chickens would want, I just smash it. So, and she's, she's gone, or he's gone, it's gone, because I don't want it eating my food. So, now if it were a ladybug, you would never do that. You want ladybugs in your garden. But there are pests that you don't want in your garden. They destroy it. So we don't want that. Okay, so we have our soil ready. I don't see any more pests in here. And we are going to open up. I got to take my gloves off to open the package. So, and these are little. These are called petite yellow. So these aren't going to get real tall, which is great for this kind of container. They have some that'll get like four foot tall. I grew some last year that got like four foot tall. They were as tall as my, my niece. And so um, there are different size ones. So if you look, now that's a different kind of seed, isn't it? You see that? They look very different than the seeds we've done. So these are our marigolds. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna Come over here. I'm just gonna disturb the ground just a little bit because again, these seeds don't need to go too terribly deep. It says to sow a fourth of an inch. So if we took our finger and we were going to our knuckle as an inch, it wouldn't even be to the tip of your fingernail would be a fourth of an inch, okay? So I'm just kinda 
doming it out a little bit and then I'm just going to take some seeds and not the whole pack. You don't need the whole pack. If you have other containers or flower beds, you can just put these right in the ground. It should be warm enough now in most places. And now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover them back up where I domed it up. We're going to cover that back up. I might actually add a little bit of soil, just a smidgen from my bucket. And that way I can <clears throat> water that in just a bit. But I'm going to do my other seed first. And again, it does have the map on the back. It'll show you. Um, these should be good pretty much everywhere. All the way up to zone four, or zone three and four. can. So from zones one, which is like the tippy part of Florida, all the way up to zone four, which is up in Canada. Um, you can plant all this now okay because we're into may we're almost it's almost mother's day weekend or i guess it is going to be mother's day weekend this weekend okay so we're going to open up our package and we're going to see what these look like but before we do i'm going to go ahead and dome we're going to dome some more out like i did Now these look a little different. Now if you can see, those look more like, kind of like a seed. They're kind of like a pear shape. And so we're gonna sprinkle some of these. And you really don't need to use the whole pack again. These do great if you plant these in a flower bed that you have. You know, in the, you can plant them in the ground. And so I'm just going to kind of cover that over. And then I'm going to put a little bit more soil in. Because these were also a fourth of an inch. So they're not very deep. And then we're just going to kind of gently pat it down. And then we're gonna do our last step, which is to water. And again, I'm not gonna overly water mine because I'm fixing to get rain. Plus we don't wanna drown our seeds. Can y'all hear all these birds? I have baby birds everywhere being uh, born. I have some, I have a hanging basket on my front porch and they built a nest and they have baby birds. And then um, in my basement window area, they built a nest and we already had baby birds a few weeks ago there. So that's it. So we're just going to let this rest just like our other ones did. And um, you could put this, I think it would be fine to put it on your green bean tower if you want. So you have flowers on top. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, I think it'll be fine. It's not that tall or heavy. Hope you have a wonderful summer vacation. I know a lot of you are getting close to finishing school. Finish strong. Enjoy um, the last little bits. And then I hope you have a refreshing and wonderful um, summer vacation. And keep reading. Yes, I said it. Keep reading. It's important. Um, you don't want to lose important skills that you have gained, but read things you want to read. Read things that interest you and um, journal, doodle, do all those kinds of things. All of those are great skills and you're like doodling's a skill. Yes, it actually helps your fine motor skills. And so doodling, um, crafting, all those things. Have fun doing those things this summer and um, make sure that you're playing with your friends in your neighborhood or your brothers and sisters if you have siblings in your home and uh, don't drive mom crazy <laughs> try not to drive mom crazy um, be, be kind to one another and, um, and catch lightning bugs oh my goodness that's one of my favorite things in the summer as a kid was to catch lightning bugs and so because before we know it summer's gone and we go back to school and then we do all the apple and pumpkin stuff and then we have 
uh, Halloween, and then we have Thanksgiving, and then we have Christmas, you know, so everything goes by very quickly. It doesn't seem like it to you guys, but to us who are getting older, it goes by really quickly. <laughs> so anyway, with that, I have, hope you have a good one, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.